The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everyone, and welcome to CTL's Education Professional Development Series. My name is Amy Al-Khalisi, the EdTech Project Manager here at CTL, and I'm joined by Stephanie Shea, Marketing Manager. For those of you who are not familiar with CTL, we are headquartered in Portland, Oregon, and have been providing innovative IT solutions to education and government customers for over 26 years. Some of our most popular products include our brands of ruggedized CTL and to go PC laptops, convertibles, two-in-ones, and tablets designed specifically for K-12 through education. Over the last two and a half years, we've worked with Google to introduce a line of CTL Chromebooks that have been recommended by PC Magazine as a best choice for Chromebooks in education. As part of our commitment to education, CTL is offering monthly professional development webinars for our education customers. These webinars will include a variety of topics relevant to K-12 ed tech, but will have a big focus on Google Apps for Education and Chromebooks in the Classroom. Today's webinar is Google Apps Administrator Basics, presented by Anthony Martini of Logic Wing Professional Development and Technology Consulting. However, before we get started, I'd like to go over a few items so you know how to participate in today's event. We've taken a screenshot of an example of the attendee interface. You should see something that looks like this on your own computer desktop in the upper right-hand corner. You are listening in using your computer speaker system by default. If you would prefer to join over the phone, just select telephone in the audio pane and the dial-in information will be displayed. You will have the opportunity to submit text questions to today's presenter by typing your questions into the question pane of the control panel. You may send in your questions at any time during this presentation, but we will collect these and address them during the question and answer session at the end of today's presentation. If we run out of time, you will be contacted by your sales representative to make sure all your questions are answered. Um, but before we begin, I want to take a quick poll to learn a little bit more about you. So indicate if you have ever used Google Apps for Education Admin Console to manage your school's account. We'll make a moment to give. Uh, we'll take a moment to give you a chance to fill out the poll. So let me go ahead and launch that. Hopefully you guys can see that on your screen. So let's see here. It looks like yes. All right. Thanks for your feedback, everyone. All right. So I hit that. Hopefully um, you guys just see my screen and at the poll questions. If you guys do see it, maybe one of the other organizers could let me know. Oh, hi. This is Stephanie. I'm marketing manager at CTL. I was just curious about the results of the poll. Just kind of on, on my end, I didn't get to see oh, the results. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, um, oh, I did there it is. share it. So thank you. Can you see that now? Yes. So it's 100%? Yeah, so we have some experience um, level here. That's good to know. Wonderful. Thank you for letting me know that. Mm -hmm. Sorry, you guys. I'm, my platform is a little bit different for some reason today with uh, GoToWebinar. So thanks for your patience. All right. So let me, before I turn over to Andy, uh, Anthony for a presentation, I'd like to just remind everyone about some resources for Nevada 21 for educators. When you visit the nr21.ctlnet website, you can learn about upcoming professional learning opportunities. You can sign up for updates about upcoming events and information and join our Google Plus private community for Nevada 21 educators. And that is a place where you can go um, and talk to fellow teachers, and not just in your school, but it's the whole state of Nevada, whoever signs up for Google+. Plus. So it's a great, and we just launched it, so we're getting more people enrolled, which is wonderful. 
Um, so right now I'd like to introduce Anthony Martini of Logic Wing Professional Development and Technology Consulting. Anthony is a Google, Google for Education Certified Trainer, Google App Certified Administrator, as well as a Google Certified Deployment Specialist. Today he will be taking you through an overview of Google App Administrator basics. So let me go ahead and transfer screens to Anthony and welcome him. So let's see, did that switch over, Anthony? Make sure you take your thing off mute. Okay. There it is. Great. All right. So you should be able to see my presentation now. Looks great. Okay. Well, thank you, Amy and Stephanie. Appreciate that. And thank you, folks, for attending. Uh, and and thank you to uh, future listeners uh, and viewers of the webinar, because this is being recorded, as Amy mentioned. So today's topic is Google Apps Administrator Basics, Beginner's Guide to Managing Google Apps for Education. So uh, we're assuming uh, no previous knowledge to working with uh, the management console, the admin console for Google Apps for Education. So we're going to do uh, an overview of uh, what can be managed and how it can be managed. and uh, just a general introduction to uh, administering Google Apps for Education for your organization. So Amy uh, did give me a very nice introduction, but uh, you can also contact me at martine at logicwing.com if you have any questions about this presentation or about Google Apps administration in general. Uh, we are a Google for Education partner. Uh, we do professional development and also uh, technical services around deploying Google Apps and Chromebooks. So in managing Google Apps for Education in the admin console, uh, you're going to be managing people. So those are your users in Google Apps for Education. In the school setting, those are school administrators, teachers, and students. And it could be board members or other community members as well. You're going to be creating policies. And those policies will allow you to control access to different applications whether the core Google applications like Gmail or Google Calendar or third-party applications like BrainPop or WeVideo and also products and those products could be Chromebooks, they could be Android tablets, uh, they could be third-party uh, web-based applications that uh, somehow interact with uh, your Google Apps account. Sometimes that interaction could be as simple as a uh, single sign-on, so you sign into your Google account and then you can launch a third-party application from the Apps Launcher. Uh, sometimes the integration might be much deeper in that uh, something like WeVideo, where you can store video in Google Drive and then edit it using the WeVideo web-based uh, video content creation uh, editing tool and then save the product back to Google Drive. So managing people, policies, and products, all from one web-based admin console. So Google Apps for Education is a suite of web-based tools, and the Management Console itself is also web-based. And you're managing access to applications, you're managing uh, policies that uh, allow you to, what you can do with your device, whether it's a Chromebook or an Android tablet, and also uh, how you can share your content. So if you want to restrict email for students, but allow full email access in Gmail to your staff, you can do so. Or you want to restrict sharing in Google Drive for a group of users, that's easily done via the admin console. So it's a single pane of glass to manage not only Google Apps, but all of your users, devices, and any third-party applications you may have. So how do you access the admin console? Uh, like I mentioned, it's web-based, so there's no software to install. You can access it from your Chromebook, uh, Windows laptop, MacBook, uh, whatever, whatever device you may have on hand, you can access the admin console. And that just uh, is easily done by going to admin.google.com, logging in with your credentials. As long as you're an administrator, you'll be able to access the admin console. So you must have administrative rights, and we'll talk about how you get those administrative rights later. You can also access the admin console from the Apps Launcher, and that's within any Google Apps application. So if you're logged into your account and you're accessing Google Drive, 
and you're in that tab, if you click on the Apps Launcher, you can click on the Admin logo or icon, and that will open up a new tab to the Admin Console. Also within Gmail, if you are an administrator, you'll have uh, an extra item in the Settings menu, right to the uh, upper right above your message list. Uh, that allows you to click on it to manage this domain, which will once again open up a tab to the Admin Console in your browser. There are also uh, mobile apps. Uh, the mobile apps allow you to do a subset of the tasks, administrative tasks that you can do from the web-based console, uh, but they're available for iOS and Android, so you can use it on uh, an Android phone or tablet or an iOS-based phone or tablet, so iPad or iPhone. So you can do some management on the go, like uh, in this case, uh, the example is resetting a password, which is a very common uh, administrative task. And then recently, Google launched uh, what's called a user hub. So if you have a Google Apps account in your school domain, uh, you can go to this website, apps.google.com forward slash user forward slash hub. It doesn't exactly roll off the tongue, but um, you can set that as your home page in your browser. So when you open up the browser, you can go directly into your Google Apps account. Uh, and if you are a Google Apps admin, you'll have uh, a, an icon for uh, the administrator console. So uh, this is uh, clearly uh, pointing towards a more touch-based, touch-enabled future for Google Apps. So what does the admin console look like? When you first log in, you'll be presented with this dashboard. And this allows you to quickly uh, access shortcuts to any of the different features of the admin console. So it's divided into sections based on uh, users or groups or apps or security. Of course, this being a Google product, there's a prominent search bar at the top of the screen. And that search bar will allow you to search on uh, any item within the admin console or any concept. So you can search for a user by name, you could search for a setting. So if you're looking for, uh, let's say, um, a Gmail setting, like SMTP settings for Gmail, if you type in SMTP, it will list all the different sections of the admin console that have settings for SMTP. Below that, you have tiles for each of the different sections of the admin console from users through support and clicking on any of those tiles will bring you to that particular section uh, and then you'll be able to view and configure different settings based on whether it's users or apps or security or domains. In the upper right you'll also see a bell which may have a number next to it and a circle with a question mark. So the bell are alerts. So those are alerts within the admin console. You can also receive those alerts as emails if you're an administrator. Uh, usually those are related to uh, alerts from Google, um, new features that are being added to Google Apps to make administrators aware so they can alert and communicate those changes to their users. And then the help button is contextual help. So it will show you if, uh, let's say you're on the dashboard and you click on the help button, they'll show you contextual help based on what you're viewing. So if you're viewing the domains section of the admin console and you click on help, it'll immediately present you with links to different uh, topics related to domains. And of course, there's a search box as well if you wanted to narrow down uh, to a specific topic that you're looking for help on. And below that, uh, you have a collapsible panel that will give you information about your domain, your Google Apps account. Uh, so in this case, uh, Google is uh, surfacing an alert about setting up mobile management, and that's management for Android and iOS devices that are connected to your Google Apps account. Below that, you can see usage information, so how users are utilizing Google Apps for your organization. There are links to the mobile apps, and then there are two different sections, uh, one with links to different tools, like the app status dashboard that would give you information about the uptime and status of different Google Apps like Drive and Gmail. And then below that, common tasks, 
that you might have to perform in your Google Apps domain, like reviewing email storage quotas for your users. And then below that, uh, Google will surface uh, recommended applications. These are third-party applications from the Google Apps Marketplace that can be added to your Google account. Okay, so I'm going to go through each of those uh, tiles from the dashboard and just give you a basic 10,000-foot uh, view of what can be configured and why it's important. So starting with company profile. So in your case, company profile is really a school or district. When you first sign up for Google Apps for Education, uh, the first user you create during sign up is a primary administrator. There's only one primary administrator. That administrator has what's called super admin rights, so they can make changes to any setting within the Google Apps admin console. There also that email address uh, for the primary administrator will also be the email address that receives any alerts from Google regarding your Google Apps account for your school or district. There are new user features. Why is this important? So Google from time to time, uh, because their, their philosophy is to be iterative with the changes to Google Apps, uh, because it's web-based, they can quickly uh, deliver updates to Google Drive, Docs, Gmail, over the web. Uh, it doesn't require users to install anything or make any changes. New user features may surface from time to time in Google Drive or Docs or Gmail. You have two options, a rapid release schedule, meaning as soon as Google makes those changes public, your users will have access to them. The other option is a scheduled release. So this will be uh, two to three weeks after the changes in one of the apps is made public. Those changes will not be seen in your domain until that time has passed. So that gives you a little bit of time to communicate these changes to your users and also prepare for them yourself as an administrator. New products, uh, this would relate to something like the addition of Google Classroom. Google Classroom did not launch initially with Google Apps for Education. It came several years later in September of 2014. So when a new product is released, do you want that to be automatically available to your users or do you want to manually be able to turn that on and off based on the groups of users in your domain? If it's on automatic, users will see a new product immediately as soon as Google releases it to the public. If it's manual, that means as an administrator, you'll have to go in and enable it for your users. The recommendations for schools, uh, best practice would be uh, keep new user features on a scheduled release and new products on manual. But of course, every school can make the decision for themselves as to how they want to handle uh, the release of new features and products. You can also customize the look of Google Apps for Education by uploading a custom school logo. So this will make it clear to your end users uh, that they're logged into their school Google account, especially if they have a personal Gmail or Google account. And you also have the ability to specify custom web addresses for Google Apps. So you can have a custom web address for Gmail or Google Drive or Google Sites. That reflects the brand and uh, domain addresses of your organization. Domains. So I'm, I'm guilty of it all the time. I use uh, account and domain when it comes to Google Apps interchangeably. Uh, when, I'm saying, when I'm talking about domains, the domain section in the admin console, I'm speaking primarily of your actual email domains or website domains for the school or district. So, you know, it would be, you know, amartini at myschool.edu. Uh, everything that's after at is your domain. So when you first sign up for Google Apps, you have to specify a primary domain. The recommendation being that you use whatever your current email domain is. Um, just signing up with the email domain does not disrupt mail flow for your organization. So let's say I already have uh, email pointed at a Microsoft Exchange server. Just signing up for Google Apps with that same domain name does not change how mail flows for your organization. Um, it's 
will certainly make it easier for your end users to sign into their Google accounts because the email address becomes their login name. So amartini at myschool.edu would be my login or username for Google Apps for Education. You also have the ability to specify secondary domains. So let's say uh, myschool.edu is the domain name and email suffix for my staff, but I have students.myschool.edu as a domain for student accounts. I can add that as a secondary domain. And it functions almost exactly like the primary domain. Alias domains allow you to uh, add an alias. So let's say you are changing domain names and you're going to begin using Gmail and you want myschool.edu uh, to be your primary domain but you still want to receive uh, email from your old domain uh, let's say if it was um, k12.ny.us myschool.k12.ny.us um, you could still receive email from the from that uh, domain as an alias and everybody in your domain would have that. And then lastly Google gives you for uh, pilot and testing purposes a test domain so you can actually uh, before turning on Gmail and having mail route to Gmail you can actually test the functionality of Gmail with a pilot group of your users by utilizing the test domain and it has the format of whatever your primary domain is, .test-google-a.com. Okay, so managing users. Uh, under the users section of the admin console, you have the ability to add, modify, suspend, delete users. And the recommendation is if you have Active Directory, that you use one of the free tools that Google provides. Google provides a free tool called Google Apps Directory Sync to allow you to sync users from Active Directory and create them in Google's cloud. You also have the ability to upload uh, groups of users using Google Apps School Directory Sync. So you'd export users from your student information system and then upload that into Google in bulk. And if you have Active Directory, you can also synchronize passwords using the Google Apps Password Sync tool. So when a user changes their password in Windows, that password is automatically synchronized to the cloud and they can utilize that to log into their Google account. And those tools are all free from Google. Uh, it's important to pay attention to organizational hierarchy. So you can uh, group users. You start off with one primary organizational unit, similar to Active Directory. Then you can create uh, any number of sub-organizations to group users, and usually uh, the idea is to group users, let's say, uh, into staff, administration, IT, and then group students based on the grade level. So then you'd have an elementary, a middle school, and a high school if it was a district. Underneath each section, sub-org, you could have nested sub-orgs, so you could have uh, underneath elementary, the names of all the elementary schools in your district, and then suborgs underneath each of those for each grade or graduating class of students. This is, becomes important later because you'll be enabling and disabling access to applications and setting security policies and Chromebook policies based on these organizational units. So it's really important that we set organizational units properly uh, when first setting up Google Apps. When managing users, you have the ability to restore Google Drive or Gmail data that's been deleted. You have up to 30 days once a user has deleted something. As long as they notify you within 30 days, as an administrator, you can restore that data. And remember, uh, for Gmail and Google Drive, as Google Apps for Education customers, you have unlimited storage. So you can store as much email or as, much, uh, as many files or folders in Google Drive as you'd like. And Google Drive can accommodate any type of file. It does not have to be just a Google Doc or a Google Slides presentation or a spreadsheet. Uh, it could be Microsoft documents. It could be uh, images. It could be videos. It could be MP3s. Uh, Google Drive can store just about any type of file. 
and for most of them you're able to view those files directly in your browser without downloading or installing any additional software. Oops. So from the user section of the admin console you're able to manage uh, through individual user cards so you can um, manage many aspects of a user's Google account including uh, resetting passwords, changing a user's name, um, viewing what policies have been applied to the user, so what apps they have access to, what devices have been assigned to them. So through the user section you'll be managing just about every uh, setting uh, for an individual user and then you'll also be able to uh, make changes to users in bulk. So you'll be able to move those users between uh, sub-organizations as well. So groups, Google Groups are primarily used as email distribution lists, but they also have the ability to be used for access control in Google Drive, Calendar, Sites. So if you wanted to share a folder in Google Drive with 100 teachers, instead of typing each teacher's email address into the sharing box, you can create a group with all 100 teachers and then just type the unique email address for that group and give sharing rights to a folder. Uh, the same can be done when creating an event in calendar and also when giving rights to folks in Google Sites. There's three different levels of uh, user access in groups. So there is one or more owners for a group and they have full power over the settings of a group. There are managers, which can have a subset of the abilities of an owner, and then members, which are just the basic uh, view and respond capability in a Google group. You can have nested groups. So uh, let's say you have groups for teachers, administrators, and um, paraprofessionals you can nest those groups under a group called staff. And then anything you share with that top level group or any emails you send to the top level group will be distributed to those subgroups and all the members in those subgroups. There are four different types of groups. There's uh, the basic email list. There's a collaborative inbox, which is helpful uh, to use as a very basic help desk. So people post when they have issues and then a group of users can decide amongst themselves uh, who wants to take responsibility and respond to that issue. There's a Q&A forum where folks can post questions and answers and uh, folks can access that via the web. And then there's a web forum which is useful. Um, teachers utilize that in classes to have collaborative discussions around a topic. It's also Groups for Business, obviously oddly named given this uh, educational context, but it's called Groups for Business. Uh, and it's free to be enabled by your administrator. If you're an administrator, you can enable Groups for Business to allow any of your users who are not administrators to create their own groups and manage them themselves. So you could give teachers the ability to create their and manage their own groups. So I mentioned earlier your primary domain administrator has super administrator rights. That means they have full rights over the entire uh, Google Apps domain. Of course, uh, you can delegate a subset of those rights. Right? So there is a super admin. You can make other people super admins. So there can be as many super admins as is necessary for your school. So it allows you to distribute the load of managing Google Apps for your organization amongst several people. But you can also delegate admin roles. So there are uh, some system roles that Google creates for you, uh, such as a groups administrator. So you can make someone uh, a groups administrator, give them the ability to manage groups for your organization. There's also a help desk user, which allows you to create uh, an administrator who only has rights to reset passwords for users. You can also restrict what 
uh, organizational units that person has dele delegated admin rights on. So if you wanted to give a teacher the ability to reset passwords for the middle school students, you could do so. So she would not be able to reset passwords for the superintendent or the IT staff. Uh, she would only have rights to reset passwords for middle school students. So you can give granular rights, uh, whether they're super admin rights. Super admin rights have the right to do anything in the domain. Delegated admins have a subset of rights and then can be further specified to have rights on only a sub-organization. I had mentioned the system roles. You can also create your own roles. So if you want to give a third party, uh, let's say um, somebody who sold you Chromebooks, the ability to enroll the Chromebooks in your domain and create policies for those Chromebooks, uh, you can create a role for that. So apps. So when we talk about apps, uh, there's the Google Core apps, and those are Gmail, Calendar, Contacts, Drive, which includes docs, sheets, slides, uh, groups, sites, and also classroom. In addition to those core applications, you have additional Google services like Maps, Google+, YouTube, etc. There's about 67 at last count additional Google services. Uh, one of the most popular with educators is Blogger. A lot of high school and middle school students uh, have Blogger enabled in order to create their own blogs, obviously for educational purposes. The difference between the core Google Apps and the additional Google services like Blogger is that the Google Apps uh, are fully supported by Google Enterprise Support and have a 99.999 uptime guarantee. And the additional Google services don't have as many configuration options. For the most part, your only option is either to turn them on or off for your sub-organizations of users. So obviously, Google Plus, being a social network, is one of the additional Google services. Um, that must be turned off for any students under the age of 13. Google's terms of service for Google Plus specify that the user must be 13 or older. If the user creates a profile in Google Plus and uh, inputs their age as under 13 years old, it'll actually suspend their entire Google Apps account. And as an administrator, you'll have to go through the process of uh, reinstating the user before they can log into Google Apps again. So they won't have access to Drive or Gmail or anything else uh, until you reinstate them. That's just one example. So. Uh, one of the most important things when you first sign up for your Google Apps account and create your users before you uh, send out communication to users with their login credentials, uh, you want to go through each application, whether it's the core, one of the core applications or the additional Google services, and make sure that uh, you turn the services off that you don't want your uh, certain users to have access to. Marketplace apps, those are third-party applications. They're available through the Google Apps Marketplace website. And it, as a super administrator, you can add those third-party applications to your Google Apps account so your users have access to them. I had mentioned a couple examples earlier of, uh, let's say, BrainPop and WeVideo. There are many, many others. And the Google Apps Marketplace has a section for educators. So you can quickly see uh, the educational applications that integrate with Google Apps for education. Some of those applications are free. Some of them require uh, licensing. And it uh, clearly says so in the marketplace. So you can easily determine what's free and what's not. Most of the applications that are geared towards education are, you know, have a freemium model. So there are some features that you're able to use for free for your entire school or district. Uh, and then if you want additional features or storage, uh, you have to pay. So you just want to pay close attention to that when you're adding these applications to Google Apps for your users. And lastly, uh, what's called SAML Apps. And those are applications that can use Google Apps, your user credentials, for single sign-on. 
So an example of a SAML app would be Dropbox. Um, if you have Dropbox for your organization, uh, you can add it as a SAML app to Google Apps for Education. And users, when they're logged into their Google account, in the same browser, if they open up Dropbox, it will automatically log them into their Dropbox account. It's actually very simple to set up. Um, in addition to that, uh, Google actually also has a number of applications that are uh, compliant. Um, one of them is uh, Office 365. So if you're also using Office 365 in your school, uh, you can actually have folks log in with, into their Google account and then with one click have them uh, log into their Office 365 account as well. So they're only entering credentials once. makes it a lot easier for your end users. You can apply policies and configurations for each app by org or by sub-org. Uh, some settings, when you set them, uh, let's say for Drive or for Google Sites, um, there are settings that apply universally. So that means the setting affects everybody who logs into your Google Apps domain. Some applications have the ability to set policy by sub-organization. So uh, let's say in Google Drive, you can have the ability for teachers to share docs with folks who have Google accounts who are not part of your school or district. So they can share a document with uh, a neighboring district, someone in a neighboring district, uh, while at the same time disallowing students from doing so. And obviously the most common scenario is when you're using Gmail for email, um, you have the ability for your teachers and uh, administrative staff to exchange email with anybody on the internet, but students can only send and receive email from folks within your organization. So you can restrict it to just your school or district. And those policies uh, have inheritance. So if you set a policy on a suborg and there are nested suborgs beneath it, those nested suborgs automatically inherit those policies. You could actually go to each of those uh, nested suborgs and disinherit the policy if you'd like. Each app has its own settings, so the core applications especially have their own settings. So there are Gmail settings, which are very different from Google Drive settings. And as I mentioned, some of the apps will allow you to set a policy for a sub-organization. You also have the ability to whitelist Google Apps Marketplace apps. So end users can install Marketplace apps themselves if you allow it. Uh, but you can create a whitelist of applications so they can only install what you allow them to. Device management, so this is where you're going to manage um, mobile devices like uh, Android phones, um, iPads, and Chromebooks. Uh, and then Chrome, the web browser as well. So you can manage some aspects of how the Chrome web browser works on a Windows or Mac device. So you can do things like uh, specify which wireless networks your Chromebooks can connect to or whether or not an Android phone must have a password when it's configured with email for your uh, Google account. It's really a mobile device management that's very simple. It's, uh, Google has do done a good job over the last 18 months of adding additional features to their mobile device management. Uh, they have a program called Android for Work that allows you to integrate Google Apps mobile management features with a third-party enterprise mobile management suite like AirWatch or MobileIron. Um, that is not currently available to education cu customers. I'm hoping that they'll make that available within the next year or so, uh, although they haven't communicated that that's going to happen. Uh, but basically, you can do some, a very small subset of mobile device management features uh, within the admin console. You can create uh, policies for your Chrome users, the Chromebooks themselves, and also have public session policies if you're using a Chromebook or Chrome base in, a, let's say, a library setting. Uh, you can have a public session set up so that uh, folks can access uh, the card catalog application on the web. You also can enroll your Chromebooks, so enrolling them allows you to manage them through the admin console. You can disable them, so if a Chromebook is damaged or lost, 
you can temporarily disable it. Uh, disabling it prevents someone from using it. So they can power on the Chromebook, but they'll get a message that you can custom tailor on the screen uh, telling them that the Chromebook is owned by your district and to return it to this address or to call this phone number. And then lastly, you can deprovision devices. So you might want to deprovision a device if it's uh, damaged beyond repair. And then you can utilize the Chrome management license for another device. You have the ability to assign Chrome apps and extensions from the Chrome Web Store to either users or to groups of devices. So when the user logs in or the user uses a particular Chromebook, uh, they'll have access to uh, their own set of Chrome apps and extensions that you can select from the Chrome Web Store, which again also has an educational section just like the, the uh, Google Apps Marketplace. And then you can also lock down a Chromebook um, through a custom policy to allow for online testing. Or you can use uh, what's called a kiosk mode and create a kiosk policy that launches one single application. So it could be your testing provider's Chrome application. Uh, both uh, Park and Smarter Balance, both testing consortia, have Chrome applications that work with the Chromebook. And by utilizing kiosk mode, um, it stops the student from doing anything other than taking the online test. So it makes the Chromebook a very simple, secure online testing device. So Google Apps has a number of security features. Um, you can specify the length of a password. So by default, Google uh, requires that you have an eight character password. You can increase that to 12 characters or 15 characters or 25 characters uh, if you'd like to make your user accounts more secure. Because uh, remember, Google Apps is a web-based system, so anybody can attempt to log in. Um, Google does a tremendous amount to secure your data. But just like any other web-based system, whether it's Facebook or Office 365 or Dropbox, uh, your password security is really important. So you want to make your password as long and complex as you can stand. You have a dashboard which allows you to monitor the strength of passwords for your users. So you can see, um, and Google gives you a bar, and it's either green, yellow, or orange, depending on the strength of the password, green being a strong password, orange being a password of middling strength, and then uh, an, a red password uh, would indicate that it's a very weak password. Most schools don't utilize it, but Google does have two-step verification, so multi-factor authentication, just like your bank may have. So then you can have uh, a app that you install on your smartphone, whether it's an Android phone or an, a, uh, an iPhone, and that app generates uh, a password that you're using in conjunction with your user password every time you log into Google Apps. So it's an additional layer of security. And that password uh, is generated randomly every few minutes. Uh, you also have the ability to use a physical token to secure your, your Google Apps account. So in addition to your password, uh, there's a little USB key fob that you plug into the machine that you're logging into Google Apps with. And you must obviously have not only the password, but also that physical key in order to access your account. But like I mentioned, uh, it's rare to see a, a K-12 organization utilize uh, two-step verification. But I would recommend it especially for uh, the staff. So there, Google Apps has application programming interfaces. What that is is simply a way for uh, pieces of software or other third-party applications to interact with uh, data in Google Apps. So I mentioned earlier, Google has a directory sync tool that's available for free. That directory sync tool is installed on a Windows machine in your, uh, on your network, and that is a conduit to pull information from Active Directory into Google Apps. 
uh, the API has to be enabled in order for that to function properly. So in order for that Google Apps Directory Sync tool to function, the API for administration must be enabled. And then you could also set up a single sign-on system. So if you're utilizing single sign-on for your school or district, uh, Google can part participate in that single sign-on, so it becomes another set of applications that you can access using the same username and password that you're able to access other systems with. So one of the common uh, misconceptions that folks have when they move to Google is that they will not have support. And that is untrue. You have 24 by 7, 365 enterprise quality support. Uh, most commonly uh, contacted via phone. So they have a hotline, toll-free hotline that you can call. Uh, you have to go in, not just anyone can call, you have to be a super administrator or a delegated administrator uh, to contact Google Apps support by generating a PIN number. The PIN number lasts for about an hour, so after you generate the PIN you have to call within an hour. Uh, and They will ask you for the PIN before they make any changes or give you adv any advice regarding your account. So that means a student couldn't call up on, your, on the school or district's behalf and try and make changes to the Google Apps domain through support they must have the PIN number. In addition to that, uh, you have links to different resources to assist you as an administrator. Um, there are many, many, many pages, uh, web pages worth of support documentation about Google Apps and Google Apps for Education uh, online. And then there are also um, things like the app status dashboard, which I mentioned earlier. Um, that app status dashboard is a website that Google maintains and it can show you at a glance the status of any of the Google apps, whether it's Gmail, Drive, Calendar, Contacts. Uh, and if there is an issue, they will post communication about what the issue may be, who it might be affecting as far as users, and what the resolution time will be. There's also a link as well to any known issues. So you can see if there's any known issues with uh, Gmail or Calendar or any other of the Google apps that might be affecting your users. So it's a good place to start if somebody is complaining of an issue with uh, any of the Google apps that your school or district is using. Billing, so Google Apps for Education is free, right? Um, but it's uh, free as in a puppy, right? You get access to Google Apps for free, but you must maintain it. So that's why we're talking about administration, right? Somebody has to manage uh, Google Apps for Education. There are, however, uh, management licensing that you must purchase for Chrome devices and Android devices. Those licenses last for the lifetime of the device. So it's a one-time purchase. You usually purchase it along with the device itself. And it allows you to enroll the device in your Google Apps Admin Console and then manage it. Uh, you can also view information about when you purchase those devices and how many licenses you have available. Google has done a, a great job of adding reporting functionality into the Google Apps Admin Console. So it gives you kind of a high level 10,000 foot view of account activity. So you can see how your users are utilizing Google Apps, which apps they're using most frequently. Uh, you can see what kind of adoption you have. So if you go live with Google Drive, you can see what percentage of uh, your users are utilizing Drive on a daily basis, how many documents they've created, uh, how many documents they've shared externally, if they have that capability by policy, and so on and so forth. You can also see uh, what applications, third-party applications, are accessing data or information in your Google Apps domain, which is really important to keep an eye on. And then you also have audit logs, uh, so you can see what changes have been made by administrators, if you have more than one administrator, uh, when users are logging in to their Google Apps account, um, access to Drive, and different activities that the users are performing on their Google Apps account. And lastly, you can have alerts set up, so as a, an administrator, you can set up alerts for, let's say, uh, failed logins, or uh, if somebody's given administrator rights on your domain, you want to know about that. 
Uh, you can also specify other users to receive alerts even if they're not Google Apps administrators. So let's say you wanted to uh, have a principal or another uh, person who's in charge of a school be alerted when certain things happen in Google Apps. So I know I covered a lot very quickly. Uh, this was meant to be obviously a very high level overview of what you can manage and how you would manage it. Uh, we're going to do some on-site sessions in state uh, where we go into more detail about managing a Google Apps account for your school or district. Uh, those will be full day sessions, so we'll get into a lot of detail. There'll be a lot of discussion. Uh, really focused less on the how because there's it's a lot of it, a lot of the uh, administrative configurations are fairly easy to understand. Uh, you know, it's a checkbox here and a radio button here that you select to make changes. So the how is seemingly easy. It's the why. So it's why are we making these changes? Uh, why are we applying these policies to this group of users? Uh, that's the important discussions to have, so we'll cover that in detail in those full day sessions. So now's the time. If you have any questions, uh, we can do a little Q&A. Hi there, this is Stephanie Shea, Marketing Manager at CTL. Uh, thanks so much for that, Anthony. And um, I also wanted to mention that there's going to be an hour-long Q&A session on this topic, and Anthony will also be there along with someone from Google and um, someone here at CTL that, that also can help answer these IT questions. So um, that's going to be Friday the 29th from 2 to 3 p.m. And at the end of the slideshow, it will uh, show on the screen a registration link. So um, just to, to point that out, I'll give people a moment to type in questions that they may have. And in the meantime, I, I did have a question, Anthony, I was curious about um, if admins wanted to set up kind of a help desk for um, their school, is there some capabilities to do that? So there's a few things you can do to set up a help desk. Uh, one of the things you, you can do is set up a Google group as a collaborative inbox, and okay. then you can assign uh, folks to uh, have the capability to, let's say if somebody posts a question about um, using Gmail, uh, one or more people will see that question be posted and then have the ability uh, to select it. So then, I, you know, you and I both see that somebody posted this issue with Gmail, uh, I see it and I select it, then I take responsibility for it and then I can post an answer. Uh, you can also set up a Google site mm -hmm. uh, that has um, frequently asked questions, uh, links to videos on how to use different apps, uh, information specific to your Google Apps account because you can apply so many different configurations and policies to how the apps work. So you can set user expectation levels by posting you know, the, the results of what your policies are for your students and staff. So those are just a few things um, that you can do to set up uh, somewhat of a help desk. And I'm sure schools already have you know, at least some basic help desk functionality that they may already be using. but if they didn't, they can take advantage of the tools right in Google Apps to create one. Okay, yeah, that's helpful. I was, I was curious about that. And then also just since, you know, some of the schools may be new to using this, what's maybe one of the most common questions that you get right away um, that people might not think to ask in this webinar? Yeah, I, I think um, I mentioned it earlier, but I'll say it again. When you're setting up your Google Apps account for the first time, uh, there's usually some trepidation on the part of uh, the person setting it up to utilize uh, the same domain name that they're that they're currently using for their other email system. Mm -hmm. uh, they think if they you know if they use their school email domain to sign up for Google Apps, that all of a sudden email is going to start flowing to Gmail. Mm. That's not the case. <laughs> so you have to you actually have to make an additional change to your DNS settings for that domain. Uh, your domain name settings um, and change what's called a mail exchanger record. And the mail exchanger record, it's simple. It's just um, a public piece of information that tells other email servers how to deliver mail to your account. Oh. And that doesn't change by signing up for Google Apps. That's something you have to do outside of Google Apps in order to make mail flow to Gmail from your current system. Okay. 
yeah, that's that's just kind of good to know um, as you know what might come up right away. We did get a question in from Anna, and she's curious: Who can delete apps from students' devices, and are the deletions permanent? So, the question, I guess, um, I'll try and do a little more clarification. When you're talking about devices, um, in the case of Chromebooks. Mm -hmm. You can assign you can assign apps and extensions to a student um, from the admin console, mm -hmm. and that means administrators have the uh, capability to uh, assign and remove access to those applications. Uh, you can also have the students themselves have the capability to add or remove apps and extensions. Um, depends on the age of the student and on the policy of the district itself, but um, that's also a possibility. And lastly, uh, teachers can go into the Google Play for Education and assign applications to students if you give them rights. Oh, so there's, okay. it could be done fully administratively, so you have to be an admin and go into the admin console in order to add or remove apps and extensions for Chromebooks for users. Uh, you can give the user rights, or you can give the student rights, or the teacher rights, or you can have the teacher manage apps and extensions through the Google Play Store. Okay, so some different. It gets a little complicated. That's definitely um, so. I'll also mention there's the Google Apps Marketplace, there's the Chrome Web Store, and then there's Google Play. There are actually three different places where you can find applications for a Chromebook or an Android device. Now, on Android devices, um, you're not assigning applications from the admin console. That's usually done through um, an enterprise mobile management um, subscription. So, like I mentioned, AirWatch or MobileIron or uh, Moz 360, which is now owned by IBM, is called something else. Hmm. Uh, there's a number of different uh, EMMs that will allow you to, over the air, uh, assign or remove applications to an Android device. Okay. Okay, well, great. Um, I think that might wrap up what we have for now, and hopefully we'll have some people from today join us for the Q&A long session on Friday. Um, but I think for now, uh, we'll go ahead and close out this session. We really appreciate you, uh, Anthony. Yeah, thank you. Uh, for having me and uh, thanks for the folks who uh, hopped on this afternoon and uh, thank you to anyone who uh, takes the time to view this uh, down the road. Hopefully it'll help them out at least getting started and then beyond that we'll, uh, like I said, we'll do some on-site more intensive, uh, more detailed uh, deep dives into the admin console and managing Google Apps. That's great. Okay, well, thank you, Anthony. Thank you, everyone, for attending web the webinar. I know everybody needs to get back to work. So um, if you have any other questions, please contact me, myself, at the email you guys see on the screen. Once you leave today's webinar, you will receive a survey on the presentation, and we'd appreciate it if you will complete that and provide your feedback. Um, please don't forget to visit our website, which is nr21.ctl.net website for news and information for Nevada 21 educators. Um, we would also like to invite you to our next uh, event for IT administrators, which will be an hour-long question and answer. Stephanie did mention it earlier for the Google Apps Administrator Basics. Um, it's going to be this next Friday, the 29th, from 2 to 3 p.m., and you can register at the CTL dot um, re google apps admin question and answer as well um, so please pass the word on to any of your friends or an IT professionals that would be interested in an overview and for questions and answers as well um, you guys will receive a follow-up email within 24 to 48 hours with the link to view recording of today's webinar um, so we definitely on uh, thank you guys for joining us, and on behalf of CTO and our presenters, thanks for joining us today, and have a great rest of your day. Thank you.